Chef Jean Jo, you like heights. Absolutely. Yes. Last week I was in your restaurant in Vegas, 110 feet above the street, but today Everest Restaurant in Chicago, 40 floor. 40th floor above the city. Well, I'm blurred to my experience. My first restaurant was opened here in Chicago was on the ground. And I never liked it. I, took, I never will open a restaurant below street level. Well, and I, I just get the opposite. And I thought, okay, fine. That's the reason I opened here on the 40th floor. But I also, what I like, I like challenge. It's a very difficult location. I'm all alone here in the financial district. And I like, you can see today, Everest is here. The whole building is here. Yeah, you've been here for 20? 27 years. 27 years. You are from France, from Alsace. Alsace. So there's a lot of influence of Alsace uh, in uh, your menu. Let's uh, before we start with the menu. Let's start with the wine list. There's a you've got one of the most pro proficient uh, Alsace wine in the U.S. Right? It's maybe in the world. In the world. In the world, I have on the, between 400 to 500 reference from Alsace alone. But mostly they all Grand Cru or Lyodi. And you even created glasses for your Aldashian wines. I did. I thought, you know what, I was never find the, rag, the glass where I wanted it. I thought, you know what, I'm here in the United States, let's go have somebody make a United States, and now we're producing a like, glass here in the United States. Yeah, and I really like those glasses. So we started with your, one of your signature dishes, which is the foie gras with prunes. Yeah, that's what I did. You know, it's, I, I look so married some way, with Alsace wine, I have some married certain dishes. On the foie gras with the prune, I did, while I marinated, the prune in the Toque d'Alsace. On Toque, Pinot Gris from Alsace, especially when it's a Vaumont bon Stradi, it goes really well with the foie gras. And that's reason. It's a dish where, again, I designed for, for the wine we're serving with. Crab? Crab. I think you have wonderful crab in Maine. Why not use it up? And I just added a bit of for vinegar, a little Alsace and touch what you have, you know, the little crunch and everything. And it's, uh, Piquito crab is wonderful. It's something we don't have in Europe at all, and I like to use that. Lobster. Lobster, that's a standard in this place. I think it's a roasted lobster, it's rust with, with a little bit bottom and a gewürz of from Alsace. And after that, at the end, I'm deglazing, it's just made a bit ginger, a little bit more wine, put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter inside, but that's it. It's a very really straightforward, as you can see, it's very really simple yeah. presented. But this is a dish what I created for this restaurant around 20 years ago. I took it away and people complained. No, 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 you one, can't. Yeah, I understand. Now it's one of the dishes here. And you, 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 you're French, you're French, but you did cook in Italy for a while, so the Italian influence on that French menu is the risotto. I always have a risotto. Since 1984, when I came to this country, I put a risotto in. And in 84, nobody knows what cannerole means. I have cannerole, I have a producer from Italy send me always 100% biodynamic risotto from Canerole on a hippie but they, they have no idea what I was talking about. Right? I had your risotto one time at a, a food and wine event in California and you were serving, um, not during a thousand people at the same time and I tried the risotto, I went in the kitchen with you while you were making the risotto and I, after I tried I said if risotto has to be in a certain way it was that risotto, it was a perfect Risotto de Cole, it was, it was so amazing. Was so for me, I never forgot that risotto. For me, you're the risotto master. I was around for 800 person, we did it, and I was a risotto with black truffle. Yeah. I like to keep my risotto pretty simple. I don't like to put 50 different items in. It's always the rice and one ingredient, and one main ingredient, so that's it. One dish you brought back tonight for dinner, salmon souffle. Salmon souffle aubergine, you know, it's uh, Paul Hebelin was my mentor. Paul Hebelin, Paul Hebelin, famous aubergine, as us. And I think I worked the first time when I was there in 1962. And this dish was created in 1964. When he got the time, La Pualdo with the golden pan was the highest title what you can give for a dish. And was maybe the most famous dish from Port Hebelin. And the other day, I thought, oh, I not did this dish for so long time. And I just have for two, three days and I'll take it off. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad I got it. No, don't take it off. Ah, we have to change. I don't care if we do the same thing. <laughs> So we uh, your duck. Duck. But I think what is interesting duck number one, I make a really a slow cooking process, but also what I do, I do some adzation turnips. When you know the people want us, you have turnips in Colmar, they call it Colmayen. It's almost like cabbage, like sauerkraut, but it's made with turnips. But I make it really mild, almost a little bit of sweet and sour style, and gives you this crunch with the duck. It's a wonderful combination between the duck 
And the turnips, only with the sweetness and sauce, I think the whole, it's, the whole thing goes very really balanced together. I think it's a wonderful dish for me personally. And then the one that I really found your Alsatian touch was the venison. Bar, I'm from a small little town, the name is Bar, it was next to Gertwille. Ger and Gertwille is the capital for the spice cake in Europe. This means when I was a little boy, around five, six years, I always make spice cake. And now I like almost combine this with some spice cake. But also what I do, I do an Alsatian knöpfle, which is not to compare with the spice. The knöpfle is only made with water, flour and eggs. But they're very, very light. It's, been, it's really what my mother did, except she put 20 more eggs inside to make creature. I took on 20 eggs over a pound out, but that's exactly what you did. So you were, when you came to the U.S., you were one of the first uh, American chefs to use only American product uh, on your menu. And uh, one very good illustration of that also tonight was the cheeses. You have a cheese selection. There's no cheese are not American on cheese selection. In all these years I'm here, I only use an artisanal cheese maker in this country. On, in 85, there was not many people no. around. There was three. Yeah. There was three American. And by now I develop a relationship, this means I always use, or now around five, six years ago, I only use for the Midwest. This means they have to search the state of Illinois. This means you have Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana, and that's the states where I use it. You, all my cheese you even have a camembert. I have a camembert yeah. family yeah. on this mag with raw milk, or just to call it like, it's a Saint Joe, Michigan, or the maker is Francois Cap, he's from Normandy. And he made me this almost a hobby. He have a big company where he makes cheese with much more, a bit different way. Mass production, but he always have his craft for the small, and he always makes me some common bread. Pre-dessert, grapefruit. I changed, my pre-dessert changed to pair my mood. The, well, that, was the, the mood of the day was good, I liked it. It was, uh, it was very light grapefruit. and not sweet, and it, just, it was a very nice, clean palate dessert, yes. I'm giving a pre-dessert, the same as I give the prelude, since I opened this restaurant. I like always before dessert something refreshing. This means you always have a cap of component. I always something cold. I always like something in room temperature. I always something with texture inside. And then I, that's the one I have to think this was like Japanese pearls. I have the grapefruit. And then I have just a bit jelly of grapefruit inside, who gives the acidity inside. And I think it makes you want to eat again. And chocolate? Chocolate, I'm always a chocolate dessert. You in America, you yeah, need a chocolate yeah. dessert. It's been like, I changing, I have always five, six different compositions. And then I always have also souffle. Now the souffle is almost like a new wave. Like when you were in Vegas, you remember all the souffles we have, 10 right. different flavors? Again, I took, I don't like to make the same in one race, I must make another one. Here I make a whole different style. And right now, these are chestnut for my, for my yard in Michigan. Maybe an hour from here. This yeah, that, 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 they, yeah, this souffle was very special. And the highlights of this uh, of the restaurant, of course, your cuisine that puts you Thank on Gallo uh, top forty U.S. restaurants, and you've been there for a while. Uh, I think you're going to be there for a few more years. I think since Gallo is in this country, <laughs> I think I have. But it's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, um, great cuisine, and then a creativity in the cuisine also. It's not only that it's it's good. It's just it changes, as you say. Your your pizza is always different, and then you. You're, you're, right now you're doing hazelnut souffle, uh, the, which, not hazelnut, uh, chestnut, chestnut, the chestnut, chestnut. Michigan. so you, you, you know, next time I come it won't be there, I'm sure, it will be a different one, and then those great views of the cities, and you have private dining, you have a main dining room, and you have private rooms, and every room in this restaurant has a view, different angle of the cities. They have, and also what, it, in the, it's really interesting because you store private room, why we serve the same food in the private room, or we serve in the main dining room? For me, this is one restaurant. It's not one, it's a different room, another one. Yeah. We serve the same food for every customer who comes here. Same food, but different views. Different views. views but which is great. You can see the you south side, the second east side, you can see the west side, you have one other yeah, choice. You could, you could come back and you have a different views every time. You can eat five yeah. times a week, you have a different view. Great. Well, congratulations, Seth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you mind I give you a kiss? No. Thank you so much Thank for you. that.